Aramai and welcome back to New Zealand Elections in History. The 1899 New Zealand general election was held on the 6th and 19th of December in the European and Māori electorates to elect 74 MPs to the 14th session of the New Zealand Parliament. Following the 1896 election, where the Liberals narrowly clung to power, some MPs and even some members of Seddon's cabinet wanted him gone. However, Seddon caught wind of this and purged many of those who were against him from his ministry. Seddon promoted many of his supporters and took on many more ministerial roles, including the roles of colonial treasurer. I'm worried about our Premier's health. Promotions, retirements, resignations have weakened the government benches, so he has been forced to accept on his shoulders more and more. It is altogether too much of a workload for one man. As treasurer, he was a very cautious financier who budgeted for surpluses and as Labour Minister became well liked by many working people. Early in 1897, the popularity of Seddon and his party increased with the ending of the Long Depression. Seddon also gained popularity for his hardline stance against what he termed the Yellow Peril. For much of his career, he regarded the Chinese with considerable dislike, referring to them as yellow monkeys in his speeches as well as promoting legislation to prevent further Chinese migration to New Zealand. In June 1897, Seddon attended both the London Colonial Conference and Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations. As a staunch imperialist, Seddon reiterated his support for the British Empire and pushed for more preferential trade with Britain and other empire countries. Seddon was lauded by both the British and Queen Victoria herself as one of the pillars of British imperialism and became close friends with British Prime Minister Robert Gascoigne Seal. At this conference, an interesting development in New Zealand's political terminology would occur. At events in London, Seddon was announced as the Prime Minister of New Zealand and was informally referred to in person by the Marquess of Salisbury and Canadian Prime Minister Wilfrid Laurier as Mr Prime Minister. Seddon liked the term and began using the term when he arrived back in New Zealand. The phrase was picked up quickly by the press and referring to Seddon as the Prime Minister, dropping the titles of Colonial Secretary and Premier, which had been the official titles of the head of the executive branch in New Zealand. However, Prime Minister wouldn't become an official name for the role until New Zealand gained Dominion status in 1907. Late in 1898, Seddon would pass his greatest accomplishment, the Old Age Pensions Act. This was groundbreaking and laid the foundations for New Zealand's welfare state. New Zealand became the first country in the world to have a state-funded pension scheme. The act gave a small means-tested pension to elderly people with few assets. The bill was the brainchild of Seddon, who despite facing considerable opposition to the bill, both from the opposition and members of his own party, successfully passed both Houses of Parliament and is seen as a testament to Seddon's political influence and power. Foreign affairs would continue to play a major role during the parliamentary term. In October 1899, the British Empire would be rocked when the descendants of Dutch settlers in South Africa, known as the Boer, who resided in the Boer republics of the Transvaal and Orange Free States, attacked and laid siege to Britain's South African colonies of Cape Colony and Natal. Britain's response was swift and they would declare war on the Boer republics on October the 11th. As a staunch imperialist, Seddon was quick to declare support for the war and would call on New Zealand men to volunteer to fight. In September, New Zealand would send a small contingent of its cavalry troops, the Mounted Rifles, to fight the Boers in South Africa. New Zealand became the first British colony to volunteer forces for the war and would send a further contingent to fight. The Boer War was a significant development in our history as it was the first time New Zealand had sent troops overseas to fight. Now back to the election. Parliament was dissolved on the 15th of November 1899 by the new governor, John Marks Knox, 5th Earl of Ranfilly. Since he was popular, Seddon would campaign on his record and aggressively attack the Conservatives for their anti-worker policies. He would also take aim at independent MPs after many had voted against his legislation in the House. The Conservatives felt that while Seddon was popular, most voters were tired of the almost decade-old Liberal government and after the 1896 result were looking for a change in government. And the winner was? Richard Seddon and the Liberals with another crushing victory, winning 49 seats, a gain of 10 from the last election, and 52.7% of the popular vote. The Conservatives would lose 7 seats to hold a measly 19 seats out of Parliament of 74 and would win 36.7% of the vote. After such a close result in 1896, King Dick would become the comeback king, annihilating his opponents including independent MPs who opposed him with the Liberals picking up three seats that had been held by independents, reducing the crossbench from nine to six MPs. Seddon's response to the Boer War was a deciding factor in the election, getting New Zealanders rallying around the flag, and behind him gave him a boost in popularity, with, with voters wanting a strong and stable government to lead them through the war. 